High-temperature superconductors are materials that behave as superconductors at unusually high temperatures. The first high-TC superconductor was discovered in 1986 by IBM researchers Georg Bednors and K. Alex Muller, who were awarded the 1987 Nobel Prize in Physics for their important breakthrough in the discovery of superconductivity in ceramic materials. Whereas, ordinary, or metallic superconductors usually have transition temperatures below 30 K, and must be cooled using liquid helium in order to achieve superconductivity, HTS have been observed with transition temperatures as high as 138 K, and can be cooled to superconductivity using liquid nitrogen. Until 2008, only certain compounds of copper and oxygen were believed to have HTS properties. And the term high-temperature superconductor was used interchangeably with cuprate superconductor for compounds such as bismuth strontium calcium, copper oxide and yttrium barium copper oxide. Several iron-based compounds are now known to be superconducting at high temperatures. In 2015, hydrogen sulfide under extremely high pressure was found to undergo superconducting transition near 203 K, the highest temperature superconductor known to date. For an explanation about TC, see superconductivity superconducting phase transition and the second bullet item of BCS theory successes of the BCS theory. History the phenomenon of superconductivity was discovered by Kamerlingh Gonas in 1911, in metallic mercury below 4K. For 75 years after that, researchers attempted to observe superconductivity at higher and higher temperatures. In the late 1970s, superconductivity was observed in certain metal oxides at temperatures as high as 13 K, which were much higher than those for elemental metals. In 1986, Georg Bednors and K. Alex Muller, working at the IBM Research Lab near Zurich, Switzerland were exploring a new class of ceramics for superconductivity. Bednors encountered a barium-doped compound of lanthanum and copper oxide whose resistance dropped down to zero at a temperature around 35 K. Their results were soon confirmed by many groups, notably Paul Chu at the University of Houston and Shoji Tanaka at the University of Tokyo. Shortly after, W. Anderson, at Princeton University, came up with the first theoretical description of these materials, using the resonating valence bond theory. But a full understanding of these materials is still developing today. These superconductors are now known to possess a D-wave pair symmetry. The first proposal that high-temperature cuprate superconductivity involves D-wave pairing was made in 1987 by Bickers, Scalapino and Scalatar, followed by three subsequent theories in 1988 by Inouye, Donich, Hirschfeld and Ruckenstein, using spin fluctuation theory, and by Gross, Poilblank. Rice and Zhang, and by Kotlier and Liu identifying D-wave pairing as a natural consequence of the RVB theory. The confirmation of the D-wave nature of the cuprate superconductors was made by a variety of experiments, including the direct observation of the D-wave nodes in the excitation spectrum through angle-resolved photoemission spectroscopy the observation of a half-integer flux in tunneling experiments, and indirectly from the temperature dependence of the penetration depth. Specific heat and thermal conductivity. The superconductor with the highest transition temperature that has been confirmed by multiple independent research groups is mercury, barium, calcium, copper oxide at around 133 K. After more than 20 years of intensive research, the origin of high-temperature superconductivity is still not clear, but it seems that instead of electron-phonon attraction mechanisms, as in conventional superconductivity, one is dealing with genuine electronic mechanisms, and instead of S-wave pairing, D-waves are substantial. One goal of all this research is room temperature superconductivity. In 2014, evidence showing that fractional particles can happen in quasi-two-dimensional magnetic materials.
was found by EPFL scientists lending support for Anderson's theory of high-temperature superconductivity. Crystal structures of high-temperature ceramic superconductors the structure of high Tc copper oxide or cuprate superconductors are often closely related to perovskite structure, and the structure of these compounds has been described as of distorted, oxygen-deficient multilayered perovskite structure. One of the properties of the crystal structure of oxide superconductors is an alternating multilayer of CuO2 planes with superconductivity taking place between these layers. The more layers of CuO2, the higher Tc. This structure causes a large anisotropy in normal conducting and superconducting properties. Since electrical currents are carried by holes induced in the oxygen sites of the CuO2 sheets, the electrical conduction is highly anisotropic, with a much higher conductivity parallel to the CuO2 plane than in the perpendicular direction. Generally, critical temperatures depend on the chemical compositions, cations substitutions and oxygen content. They can be classified as superstripes, i.e., particular realizations of superlattices at atomic limit made of superconducting atomic layers, wires, dots separated by spacer layers, that gives multiband and multigap superconductivity. Ibacuo superconductors The first superconductor found with Tc greater than 77 K is yttrium barium copper oxide. The proportions of the three different metals in the YBA2CU307 superconductor are in the mole ratio of 1 to 2 to 3 for yttrium to barium to copper, respectively. Thus, this particular superconductor is often referred to as the 123 superconductor. The unit cell of YBA2CU307 consists of three pseudocubic elementary perovskite unit cells. Each perovskite unit cell contains a Y or bar atom at the center, bar in the bottom unit cell, Y in the middle one, and bar in the top unit cell. Thus, Y and bar are stacked in the sequence, bar Y bar, along the C axis. All corner sites of the unit cell are occupied by CU, which has two different coordinations, CU and CU, with respect to oxygen. There are four possible crystallographic sites for oxygen, O, O, O and O. The coordination polyhedra of Y and bar with respect to oxygen are different. The tripling of the perovskite unit cell leads to nine oxygen atoms, whereas YBA2CU307 has seven oxygen atoms and, therefore, is referred to as an oxygen-deficient perovskite structure. The structure has a stacking of different layers. One of the key features of the unit cell of YBA2CU307X is the presence of two layers of CuO2. The role of the Y plane is to serve as a spacer between two CuO2 planes. In YBCO, the CuO chains are known to play an important role for superconductivity. Tc is maximal near 92K when X 0.15 and the structure is orthorhombic. Superconductivity disappears at X0.6, where the structural transformation of YBCO occurs from orthorhombic to tetragonal. By TL and HG based high TC superconductors, the crystal structure of by TL and HG based high TC superconductors are very similar. Like YBCO, the pair of sky type feature and the presence of CuO2 layers also exist in these superconductors. However, unlike YBCO, CuO chains are not present in these superconductors. The YBCO superconductor has an orthorhombic structure, whereas the other high TC superconductors have a tetragonal structure. The Bicenia California CuO system has three superconducting phases forming a homologous series as by 2 senior 2 can minus 1 Q no 4 plus 2 N plus X. These three phases are by 2201, by 2212 and by 2223, having transition temperatures of 20, 85 and 110 K, respectively, where the numbering system represent number of atoms for by, senior, California and CU respectively. 
The two phases have a tetragonal structure which consists of two sheared crystallographic unit cells. The unit cell of these phases has double bioplanes which are stacked in a way that the biatom of one plane sits below the oxygen atom of the next consecutive plane. The California atom forms a layer within the interior of the CuO2 layers in both Bi2212 and Bi2223. There is no California layer in the Bi2201 phase. The three phases differ with each other in the number of CuO2 planes, Bi2201, Bi2212 and Bi2223 phases have 1, 2 and 3 CuO2 planes respectively. The C-axis of these phases increases with the number of CuO2 planes. The coordination of the Cu atom is different in the three phases. The Cu atom forms an octahedral coordination with respect to oxygen atoms in the 2201 phase, whereas in 2212, the Cu atom is surrounded by five oxygen atoms in a pyramidal arrangement. In the 2223 structure, Cu has two coordinations with respect to oxygen. One Cu atom is bonded with four oxygen atoms in square planar configuration and another Cu atom is coordinated with five oxygen atoms in a pyramidal arrangement. TL bar California CuO superconductor the first series of the TL-based superconductor containing one TLO layer has the general formula TLBA2 can 1 QNO2 N plus 3, whereas the second series containing two TLO layers has a formula of TL2 bar 2 can 1 QNO2 N plus 4 with N equals 1, 2 and 3. In the structure of TL2 bar 2 CuO6, there is one CuO2 layer with the stacking sequence. In TL2 bar 2 CaCu208, there are two CuO layers with a California layer in between. Similar to the TL2 bar 2 CuO6 structure, TL layers are present outside the bar O layers. In TL2 bar 2 California 2 Cu3010, there are three CuO2 layers enclosing California layers between each of these. In TL-based superconductors, TC is found to increase with the increase in CuO2 layers. However, the value of TC decreases after 4 CuO2 layers in TLBA2 can 1 QNO2 N plus 3, and in the TL2 bar 2 can 1 QNO2 N plus 4 compound. It decreases after 3 CuO2 layers. HG bar California CuO superconductor the crystal structure of HGBA2CuO4, HGBA2CaCu206 and HGBA2California2Cu308 is similar to that of TL1201, TL1212 and TL1223, with HG in place of TL. It is noteworthy that the TC of the HG compound containing 1 CuO2 layer is much larger as compared to the 1 CuO2. CuO2 layer compound ethalium. In the Hg-based superconductor, Tc is also found to increase as the CuO2 layer increases. The observation that the Tc of Hg1223 increases to 153K under high pressure indicates that the Tc of this compound is very sensitive to the structure of the compound. Preparation of high Tc superconductors the simplest method for preparing high TC superconductors is a solid-state thermochemical reaction involving mixing, calcination and sintering. The appropriate amounts of precursor powders, usually oxides and carbonates, are mixed thoroughly using a ball mill. Solution chemistry processes such as cot precipitation, freeze drying and sol gel methods are alternative ways for preparing a homogeneous mixture. These powders are calcined in the temperature range from 800 degrees Celsius to 950 degrees Celsius for several hours. The powders are cooled, reground and calcined again. This process is repeated several times to get homogeneous material. The powders are subsequently compacted to pellets and sintered. 
the sintering environment such as temperature, annealing time, atmosphere and cooling rate play a very important role in getting good high TC superconducting materials. The YBA2CU307X compound is prepared by calcination and sintering of a homogeneous mixture of Y2O3, BACO3 and CUO in the appropriate atomic ratio. Calcination is done at 900 to 950 degrees Celsius, whereas sintering is done at 950 degrees Celsius in an oxygen atmosphere. The oxygen stoichiometry in this material is very crucial for obtaining a superconducting YBA2CU307-X compound. At the time of sintering, the semiconducting tetragonal YBA2CU306 compound is formed, which, on slow cooling in oxygen atmosphere, turns into superconducting YBA2CU307-X. The uptake and loss of oxygen are reversible in YBA2CU307-X. A fully oxidized orthorhombic YBA2CU307-X sample can be transformed into tetragonal YBA2CU306 by heating in a vacuum at temperature above 700 degrees Celsius. The preparation of Bi, TL and HG-based high TC superconductors is difficult compared to YBCO. Problems in these superconductors arise because of the existence of three or more phases having a similar layered structure. Thus, syntactic intergrowth and defects such as stacking faults occur during synthesis and it becomes difficult to isolate a single superconducting phase. For Bicenia California, CUO, it is relatively simple to prepare the Bi2212 phase, whereas it is very difficult to prepare a single phase of Bi2223. The Bi2212 phase appears only after few hours of sintering at 860 to 870 degrees Celsius. But the larger fraction of the Bi2223 phase is formed after a long reaction time of more than a week at 870 degrees Celsius. Although the substitution of PB in the Bicenia California CUO compound has been found to promote the growth of the high TC phase, a long sintering time is still required.